How's everybody doing? <clears throat> I'm going to finish up Acts 14 and move on to Acts 15. Uh, Acts is very different than any other book of the Bible. It's very unique. Sometimes if it feels like I'm just kind of going through the motions, um, really what's the some were to say like, can you just write two or three sentences about the book of Acts? Five or six, whatever. Okay. It would be, this is Jesus and his ascension into heaven to sit at the right hand of God the Father, which is God, the creator of everything, having at his right hand, God, the creator of everything, but the pathway of when he came in the flesh to the earth, sitting at his right hand. And once that took place, the Holy Spirit was then, because Jesus had gone, Jesus made it very clear, I can't send y'all the comforter until I ascend with my father. Okay. So the Holy Spirit cannot be sent forth until Jesus ascended. After Jesus ascended, the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles that traveled with him, and one named Saul, who was not an apostle that moved with him during his uh, life on the earth, Saul was a Pharisee bounty hunter killing Christians, and Jesus called him personally. So Jesus was personal, like really personal with the apostles. They moved about with him. They dwelt with him. He ate with them. He performed miracles with them in front of them. And then there was one human being that he literally, physically called to after he ascended. It's called Saul on the road to Damascus. And upon that calling, Saul became Paul and became a grafted in apostle like Gentiles are grafted in Jews, a true Jew, not a Jew by bloodline or by name, but a true Jew of the calling of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, slash God the Father, received the calling of grace and mercy, a sheep, We get the calling in our gut today. Saul, who later became Paul and wrote most of the epistles, got a physical calling, not a spiritual one. Though Jesus had ascended, it was like the burning bush that Moses had speak to him. We don't have any entity or God, excuse me, let me, re, let me, yeah, because people do have demonic entities speak in one way or another, but we as sheep, sheep don't get the call physically anymore. We don't hear something. We feel it. The eyes to see and the ears to hear are indwelt in our inner spirit speaks to the heart it enters into the mind it comes out the mouth and you start to hear and see the truth in god's word and then you verbalize it and start to proclaim it and which is bearing fruit and then you'll get your tribulation as you're called out of the world and what the 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 book of acts is all about 
in these five sentences. <laughs> it's about the apostles who are able, along with Paul, who are able to perform these miracles just like Jesus was because they had a very physical personalized relationship with Jesus while he was here on earth or in the case of Saul Paul right after he ascended and so they had these special powers to perform miracles to the new church four of them wrote the gospels the bible is written every book in the bible is meant to be the book in the bible any book that's been left out was meant to be left out so let it be left out enoch there is a book of enoch and then there's a second book of enoch the second book of enoch throw it in the garbage and burn it the first book of enoch does have things that are relevant but it is not the gospel truth or the lord would have put it in his word the word is perfect in the greek in hebrew it is not perfect in the way it was transcribed the lord meant for it to be a riddle for it to be a parable. Jesus spoke in parables. Jesus is the word. That means the word is a parable. The apostles said to Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? He said, because it is meant for you to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. For them, it is not. So the plain black and white that you read on paper today is not perfectly easily understood by design people can read something from the word of god and i can read something from the word of god and we're going to see it and feel it and proclaim it two completely different ways so the book of acts to put it in about five sentences, sarcasm at me. It's a story of the apostles and how they first, through the Holy Spirit, through God ordaining it from before the foundation of the world, how these apostles, through the Holy Spirit, cultivated the church and got the church up and running. And all of the weird and crazy things that they encountered the hate just like jesus did and just like you will if you're truly proclaiming the truth that god doesn't love everybody he loves those that he knew from before the foundation of the world those of a very narrow way that few find. And when you tell people that you will be hated for it, congratulations. You have to be hated to be a sheep. It's a prerequisite. Jesus said the world hated me before it hated you, but I have called you out of the world of false lies. Therefore, the world hateth you. If you're not hated by the world, I'd be a little nervous about that. I love that my channels are very small. I love that when i do videos with 103 subscribers and put it on facebook with i don't know 
I cut about a thousand uh, Facebook friends out during through the 2020 2021 fiasco. I think it was last summer. I cut them out. I didn't want to see them anymore. I didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore. And so when I put that Bible study at my 1.5 thousand friends, my 1500 friends, Fifteen, twenty-four friends. Some are brand new. I don't know who they are. They sent me a friend request. Maybe they came from, uh, you know, my other YouTube channel. Most of these did. And so I put this, I put these Bible studies out there. So you got 1.5 plus 103. Some are the same. Many are probably the same. And I get four views, seven views, four views, three views, three views, four views, eight views, six views, seven views, seven views over the last 10 studies. It's a narrow way, isn't it? Now, I do know that most of the church on the earth as it sits here today is lost. I say at least 99% of the church is lost, but I think it's way more. I think it's 99.9999999% of the church today is lost. A portion of that will be brought and get the call, will be brought to the truth and get the call from the Holy Spirit as the world is crumbling during World War III, but the rest, the rest, and I don't know if the rest is me just sliding over the decimal more as far as who gets the call during World War III. Do I just slide the decimal of the 9.9999 over to where it's just 99% are still lost? And then at the Great Tribulation, 99% of the lost sheep will get the call during the abomination of desolation. And at that point, the fallen angel demonic entities enter all of the goat bodies and the sheep start getting slaughtered by humans that have this seemingly super power ability. They've got to have somebody to kill. They've got to have plenty to kill because they're going to kill rapidly. It's going to be this very horror slasher movie type bloodbath that I think will only last potentially two to three days max or else no flesh would be saved, would it? No. So the book of Acts, eh, five sentences. You could write it now, couldn't you? You could do it in five sentences. The book of Acts is basically a book of the apostles that traveled with Jesus along with Saul, who became Paul. And their adventure of raising the church up to being a real church that can have truth and understanding in its persecution. And that's basically what the book of Acts is. But you already knew that. <laughs> After I gave that nice synopsis, huh? You, 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 could, you could do it in five sentences. Upon arriving in Antioch, they called the church together and reported everything God had done through them. Notice God did it through them. And how he had opened the door of 
the proper calling to the Gentiles also, or the door of faith to the Gentiles also. And they stayed there with the believers for a long time. Chapter 15. By the way, I took a little break, and um, Vanessa said, what is the rod of iron Jesus rules with? And I said, you'll know when it smacks you upside your head, <laughs> LOL. Uh, I'm kidding, LOL. I couldn't resist, though. Um, resist. Did I spell that right? It just don't look right. Yeah, it's just couldn't resist. And, of course, I have no idea. I'll cover it in the Wednesday Bible study. Ching. All right, so the rod of iron. Uh, how many times is it mentioned? The rod of iron, Bible verse. What does the Bible say about the rod of iron? Revelation 2.27. <sighs> Psalm 2.9. I'll break them with it. So it looks like it's in 2, uh, 227, 227, 16 Bible verses about rods in general. So we know that the Lord corrects his, right? And because uh, I know you know this, Vanessa, the, uh, the Hebrews 12, 68, for whom the Lord loveth, which are his sheep, he chastens and scourges each of them and uh that those that are without this locking down and beating the world out of them are bastards and of course are not his he doesn't love them like a father should truly love a son which is to correct them you know don't spare the rod with your child so on and so forth so it's that mechanism which comes in many, many forms of how he pulls us out of the world. We went over it already. The world hated me before I hated you, but I've called you out of the world. So it's the calling out of the world. That's part of the rod. That's him locking you down and beating the world out of you. Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. That's a form of the rod. It's your justification, sanctification process from A to Z. The rod is upon you. In the most loving way, from the day you're born till the day you die. And you can assume that the rod is also part of your death process. We all want to go with that very quick aneurysm or very fast heart attack or the car accident that lops your head off so you don't feel a thing. But um, even your death, you know, is part of that rod of the Lord. Uh, getting the world out of you at the fullest extent so uh hope that helps you'll know, you'll know when you get smacked by a girl <laughs> anyway uh i'll stop being silly let's keep going while paul and barnabas were at antioch of syria some men from judea arrived to begin to teach the believers Unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. So this is also, I'm glad the Lord put it in my heart to say what I said earlier. I don't pre-read these. As you can probably tell, I come a little unprepared. I like to watch, I like for y'all to watch me stumble through stuff or get stuck sometimes. And so you can see the process of trying to figure things out. But uh, the Lord had me say, what's this book all about? This is another part. You got to include this also in your five sentences. It's the, the so the first sentence was, you know, it's, it's the life of the, the true apostles as they began uh, to raise up the church through the Holy Spirit, period. It's also dealing with how the apostles had to transform the church through keeping the old Torah laws of circumcision being washed in water 
any other type of ritual you can bring to the table from the old covenant laws and bridging it over to the fact that none of them are needed, that it is strictly about. Are we still in five sentences? Because one of them was a pretty long run on, but that's okay. But it's about how now there are no rituals. It is but by the calling of the Holy Spirit. So it's that process of throwing those rituals out. It's their journey. Physically, mentally, spiritually. Of being the front men for the church. The true church leaders. And since the true, truest church leader is Jesus in the Holy Spirit, then as they eventually were killed, then all, you know, for every one killed, there's 10 to 100 more that the Lord used that one that was killed are then raised up. Like as fast as they were killing Christians in Rome, more just seemed to keep multiplying. So as Rome was falling, they melted the Christianity with all the false pagan gods. I was talking with a lady today, and her words were this. I'm no longer Catholic, but I took Mary with me. She still prays to Mary. So she's praying, of course, to Lucifer, Venus, the queen of heaven, the queen of the universe, the goddess. So it's a, you know, and this person will tell you that Mary performed miracles in her life. And she saw these miracles also in others being performed through Mary. So she is a believer in Mary. So these people, and of course, demons can perform all types of magic and supernatural powers, but nothing like what you'll see at the abomination of desolation. So if this woman that I talked to today was tricked by the father of lies into believing these miracles, which again, this could have happened to me or you. But the Lord chose it to happen to this person. Now, the Lord could call her out of it at any time. World War III, abomination of desolation. But as of today, this, this poor woman is bearing no fruit. She is, in fact, lost or reprobate. It's not for me to decide. And there is no free will decision involved. It'll be what God has ordained from before the foundation of the world. He's declared it good or bad for this person, happy or sad for this person. It is set in stone. We just don't know the outcome. We don't see the future. So. Unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them, arguing vehemently. Well, folks, getting dunked in water and getting circumcised were two of the three rituals you had to perform to become a proselyte Jew. They didn't keep one and dump the other. So lump circumcision with getting dunked in water. And what was the third one? You must bring an animal sacrifice. It was either two turtle doves or a lamb, possibly unblemished, which were rare. So the two turtle doves would suffice. Finally, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, accompanied by some local believers, to talk to the apostles and the elders about this question. 
the church sent the delegates to Jerusalem and they stopped along the way in Phoenicia, Phoenicia, Pho, Pho in, Pho e, Pho in Asia, in Samaria to visit the believers. They told them much to everyone's joy that the Gentiles also were being converted. So this is strictly of the Jewish bloodline lineage and the Gentiles here are being referred to as non-bloodline. Okay, so wherever you see the word Gentile, you have to be very careful what context are they using it in. There are some parts of the Bible where Gentiles are just are referred to as goats, and there are other parts of the Bible where Gentiles are referred to as sheep, not of the bloodline. So take it into context. And like everything, take everything that I tell you to prayer. Let God be true and every man a liar. Even when they arrived in Jerusalem, Barnabas and Paul were welcomed by the whole church, including the apostles and elders. They reported everything God had done through them. But then some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and insisted the Gentile converts must be circumcised and required to follow the law of Moses. So the apostles and elders met together to resolve this issue. Now let's read this in the King James. What do you say? Too long of a Bible study? Let's just start down at 15. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after this manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputed with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through uh, Phoenice, I like that better, thank you, Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. Now, the circumcision is specific to the law of Moses. Uh, I'm not sure if the dunking of water was an oral law or not. Was baptism part of the law of Moses. Faith, repentance, baptism in water, and remission of sins were part of the law, as they were also the Ten Commandments. Uh, that was that don't don't go by that was baptism part of the law of Moses Korah I think I'm going to like this better ritual immersion in mikvah, mikvah is part of Judaism and needed and mandated in the Torah five books of Moses for various circumstances while the act of I think it was two sword join to join them as we've spoken about earlier uh, while the act of ritual purification is performed in Judaism as part of the process of conversion. Yes. So it was part of the five books of Moses. It was part of the Torah laws if you are not born into the bloodline through the circumcision. 
then to join them, you had to get circumcised and you had to be washed because you came in dirty. See, the Jew bloodline was not born dirty. They just needed to be circumcised. Hope this helps. But I just, you know, I'm glad I learned that too because I, yeah. I'm learning with you, peoples, right? Let's close out Revelation 13. It's a two-day event. The days of the Antichrist and his reign. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. So this is the false prophet. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused of the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. Who does? The beast out of the earth does. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of these miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. There are, two, what, what we're reading about is in two different, um, one's in a gospel and one's in a epistle. Second Thessalonians chapter two, King James Version. Matthew 24, King James Version, Bible Gateway. So what we're going over is Matthew 24, 15, the abomination of desolation, which kicks off the great tribulation where Jesus said, unless I cut those days short. So everywhere where you see a timeline of three and a half years, 1260 days, that's very symbolic because we know that the Lord states that he must cut those days. What days? What days are we cutting short? The prophecy days that are mentioned. Those days must be cut short. For the elect's sake, or no sheep would be left on the earth. Though I think some are removed, that maybe the bloodline remnant is removed at some point, or maybe after the Lord puts a stop to the great trib, are they removed and set apart? I'm not sure. But you see where it says, there shall arise false Christ. When you look up the word Christ's, and false prophets, they're not plural. It's a singular word. So it's telling you that at this time, there is going to rise up a false Christ, beast out of the sea, and a false prophet, the beast out of the earth, and shall show great signs and wonders to the point where if it were possible, it would even trick God's elect. In other words, his sheep would even be fooled. It's going to be that deep and heavy of a supernatural experience when you see sal shall show she sells she sells by the seashore i have a problem with this when you see that shall show great signs and wonders just throw in the word supernatural these are going to be miracles of a supernatural state and that God has allowed them to do this trickery because it is such a strong delusion. Let's get into that. So then you want to go to 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 11. And what we're seeing here, again, throw in the word supernatural. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all supernatural power and signs and lying wonders. So much deceivableness. 
all the unrighteous, all the goats of the earth are handed over to believing in. What's taking place is God is sending a very supernatural, powerful, strong delusion that they, the goats, that all goats are going to believe this lie. That, and that it's so strong and supernatural and powerful that if it were possible, even God's very elected sheep would be tricked. Because it's going to be miracles. And that's how the Lord called his at the very beginning through himself and the apostles. He performed miracles to raise up his church. After a while, Jesus ascended. The apostles had these special powers. And then it's a calling by the spirit. Well, they're going to raise up their goat church. Where it would be one mind, just like all the church here, we all the churches of one truth. It is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, not three persons. Well, there's God the Father, but then there's his Son, God the Son. It's three persons. God's three persons. No. Stupid. I had to 86 somebody that came to me and understood election and predestination during the pandemic. As I was teaching it and preaching it, they understood it and they followed it and they got with this guy and they married him. And then she's coming at me with God as three persons. It's one God, but he's three persons. Because of the Elohim Bible verse, let us make man in our image. Our, God speaking to Jesus over there. Hey, Jesus. God's over there going, hey, hey, Jesus. Hey, let's make man in our image, Jesus. No, stupid. When you look it up, the word angels is part of that word, Elohim. Don't ever let anybody trick you. That is one of their base tricks. God is speaking to the angels. There is one God. There is one faith. In other words, the calling. That's your spiritual baptism. How do you get your faith? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And you go through your baptism of the Holy Spirit by fire, which are the fiery trials, as if some strange thing is trying you. And the Lord's pulling you out of the world. That is your one faith and your one baptism. Your faith is daily. Faith without works is dead. You're performing works daily from your baptism by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is the one God, not a person a separate person from the other persons, that's stupid. Don't ever let anybody rub you in that direction. I explained it to her. She never liked anything, never said thank you. She stuck to her guns and I blocked her. She tried to feed me a false teaching. She's married to a guy that teaches this false teaching. So I 86 her. The Holy Spirit put it in my heart. He let her go. If she's just a lost sheep, don't worry. The Lord will catch her. But not through me anymore. I was done with her. One God and Father of all. 
that's it. What about Jesus? He's one God and father of all. He came through a different path. It was God coming through a pathway to connect with humans. Now it's through the Holy Spirit. But we have the Jesus figure head to look at seated at God's right hand. but they're one in the same, you're basically looking at a pathway. You ever seen a ventriloquist? You got this, which is like the image that speaks, literally, which I think why they love doing ventriloquism because it's Satan talking through a dummy, Trump. Well, that's God as Jesus. It's not Jesus speaking individually. Well, you know, I'm, I got my own thought over here, God. I'm going to tell you what. I mean, you know, God, we agree on the same things. But let me just say. No. Jesus isn't just saying anything. It's God saying it as Jesus. Jesus and or the Holy Spirit are pathways to humankind. There is no speaking of the Holy Spirit in the new Jerusalem because we are now with him. We're a new creature. All things are made new. We have no memory of this life. When, he's, when he wiped away all our tears and gave us the new body and brought us into our new creation, as we are now the bride and we enter the bride, the new Jerusalem, because she comes down as a bride and we are fused into that as the bride. And it's just the bride and God, it's just the bride and the bridegroom. We don't ever sit around in the next life and think back to our son or daughter who was a goat because God wiped away those tears at judgment. That's why God had to wipe away our tears. We saw them being judged. And they saw us being loved. And we saw them seeing us and them understanding they weren't loved and we were. And God has to remove our, he has to wipe away our tears. And then we are glorified. We do come about a glorified body. The thousand year millennial reign, I have no idea if it's one day or a thousand years because the Bible is clear that to God, a thousand years is one day. So guess what? That thousand years could be one day. It says a thousand years, go with it. I could care less. I don't know for sure myself. It's either or. How would you know for sure? It clearly states that it's a thousand years, but yet over here, it clearly states that to God, a thousand years is a day. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do with that? There's nothing you can do with that. It's not anything you need to know today. So they're going to be getting their baptism through miracles of the demonic sense the evil demonic spirits are going to enter into them just like the holy spirit entered into us none of it is by man's will god ordained who it would happen to who the goats are who the sheep are from before the foundation of the world declared
So let's read it again. He doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. And he had power. Say it with me. Supernatural. It's not like anything that's ever been seen before ever on this earth. He had supernatural power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Go back to Daniel. The image of Nebuchadnezzar. Same type of deal. Just this time. And much more of a hellified form. And hell means death in the grave. This will be much more deadlier. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, all what? All goats. He causes every single goat, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. What, is, what does God do when he seals his church? Seals them on their foreheads. This is a spiritual sealing that's taking place. It's not anybody that's going around and got to get a, a barcode or an implant. That's stupid. This is symbolic of the body being overtaken instantaneously. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast that is the number of the man and his number 603 score and six. And we prove out many times that Don Drumpf comes to 666 in Gematria, which is thousands and thousands of years old, something that was used already when this was written, converting letters to numbers. And if you key in S-I-X, 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 you get Donald John Drumpf in Gematria. So he's 666 in both directions, Don Drumpf or Donald John Drumpf. It is the name Drumpf, D-R-U-M-P-F, which was the bloodline that Trump came from. He is a Drumpf. I could change my name from Stokes to Smithsonian. But people would go, yeah, he's a Stokes. That's that Stokes boy. I can't run from it. I would always be a Stokes. He can't run from being a Drumpf. The Drumpf name fulfills this Bible verse. The horn, the Trump name fulfills the other prophecy of the Antichrist where Jesus himself said, I come in my father's name and you receive me not, but if one shall come in his own name, him you will receive. And he's here in his own name because the horn was the Antichrist of the book of Daniel. Basically, the name of the Antichrist of the Old Testament is the horn. And he's here in his own name because a Trump is a horn. He's literally here as Donald Horn. Where the Antichrist of Daniel was the Trump. They're interchangeable. They're synonyms. They're synonymous. They both mean the same thing. He's here in his own name. People look at buying and selling. And they think that there's going to be this process of getting barcodes and or microchips or all this stuff on you on your person on your forehead or in your right hand if that's the case then why does jesus tell them when ye therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by daniel the prophet where the antichrist is 
literally standing in the holy place, declaring himself to be God. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. Why does Jesus say, you folks that be in Judea, flee to the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not even come down to take anything from your house. Neither let him which is in the field turn back to get his clothes. If it's this process of, oh, well, people need to make a decision. You got to make a decision. You got to get something either put in your right hand or your forehead. So you go out and buy clothes and sell clothes and buy meat and sell meats. No. That's thrown in just to throw you off. It's a very symbolic situation. Those entities are going to enter into the humans immediately. And they're going to start killing sheep immediately that's why jesus says run don't even look back they are coming for you now Sorry, I had to gather myself a little bit there. It's deep. This stuff's deep. <sighs> la, 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 la. All right, love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.